So let me give you a little backstory here. Terra put up a hummingbird feeder and it caused World War III. Apparently these guys are racist. They judge <laughs> each other by the color of their feathers. So it started a war between the orange ones and the green ones. And it just got out of hand. So we put up another feeder and we thought that'd fix the situation, but no, it did not because they could see the feeders and it was still a battle for the feeder. So we moved it to a more secure location. Now they can't see the two feeders. Now we're having a more intimate time with the hummingbirds and we thought, you know what? Let's connect with them energetically. So that's what Tara's been doing and we're gonna bring you in on that. Tara, what have you learned from the hummingbirds here? Well, first of all, they're saying that they're not actually at war. They're not actually, they don't hate each other. They said their whole life is one big game. So that's what they're doing right now. Like they said, um, well, the green hummingbirds are saying the orange hummingbirds are focused on like their maneuvering, you know, and getting to an end goal, which is to get to the hummingbird nectar. And they said, so when they win, we all have a good laugh, you know, <laughs> and they said, but that's what they're focused on where the green ones, um, he said, they're more focused on like being able to outsmart, outmaneuver the other one. So it doesn't matter if they get to the feeder or not. It's just like everybody knows who kind of won that one. And they said, it's just all a big game. They said, technically, we all get to feed where each other feeds like we, we share. You guys just don't really see it. Um, right. And so um, you were saying that they live at a, such a faster speed that uh, they perceive reality differently. And... To us, it seems like they're very aggressive, but they're just moving at the speed that they move and they're experiencing past, present and future all at once, right? Yeah, they said this, their processing of their world is just, it's so overlapped past, present, future that it's, they're almost in like that infinite space. Um, whereas they said, you guys are so slow. So past, present, and future seem so distant from each other, where for us, every action can be clearly seen from our past, see how it affects our present, and then we can see our future result from it. Like, and we get to make decisions based on that information. So uh, tell us about the um, airspace. What's going oh. on with the airspace? <laughs> oh yeah, so the, the, the green one, I was like, well, why don't you come down lower and like hang out with me? And he says, no, because then I'll be in lower airspace. He goes, in one of our other games that we play is who controls upper airspace and lower airspace. He goes, it's actually really hard to come from lower and, you know, say you, you claim that upper space. So that's another game. Right. So if, it, if <laughs> the orange one, basically what's happening is the orange one is playing king of the hill, essentially. And he's stopping. Oh, there he is right now. <laughs> uh, he's trying to stop anyone else who's not orange from drinking the nectar. And uh, <laughs> I'm trying to record and talk at the same time. And so the green ones just want to see if they can outsmart the orange. They don't care about the nectar as much. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in order to get the advantage, it's whoever has the higher ground is winning in their little game. Yeah. Uh, the, and the orange one is, seems to be faster and maneuvers a little bit better. So he always has the upper ground. So the green ones don't want to lose any territory to the orange one by going lower than they they have to, basically. And they're also saying that, you know, not every bird species thinks this way, you know, or, or acts the same. They said, you know, but this is just us. They said, like, our consciousness level and kind of what our duty here is, as birds is to live life like it's a game every day. We get to choose fun and yet we all support each other at the same time. So they said, what seems like war to you is just a game to us. Right, and so why don't you tell them about their day-to-day -day activities? Oh, so they're like, so we're, we're flying around and you know, if we see like some good nectar or something, it's like, oh, I wanna join in on this like little war game over here, but it's just for funsies. And then, you know, hey, they're like, if we want like little hummingbird sex, we'll go have that too. <laughs> um, they said, but it's like, that's also co-creation where they said the, well, this is from one of the boys speaking. He says like, our job is like, pay a hide and go seek with the girl. If you catch her, it's like, yay, I win. He says, and then if, uh, you know, and then she's like, oh, you got me. But it's like, she wants to be caught and, and I want to catch her. So he's like, we're actually 
like everything is is can like co-creation in our world we're like we're all in each other's fun we're all having this game together you know <laughs> so it's not like the r word they're no <laughs> they're just sneaking up from behind a bunch you... of rascals <laughs> and i was like wow that's really interesting <laughs> So what's going on here? The orange one seems to have lost his grip on this one. Almost a yeah. free for all here. Hard to tell what's happening right now. Well, the green one said they felt more comfortable in this space, uh, you know, to be able to dominate this feeder because they thought I had made a, a glass shrine of them hanging from that tree over there. It's a green like hummingbird, like garden light where they change colors. So the hummingbirds fly past, the green ones at least, fly past this every time. Yeah. Anytime they're around here, they come around here, they buzz, and they try to sniff it. <laughs> now, <laughs> and I don't think they're stupid. I, I, I think it knows that it's not real, but it's trying to like say, oh, the humans acknowledge me. I got a little thing here. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So that's why they feel comfortable letting yeah. you sit under their feeder yeah. while they have bird wars above you. <laughs> And they said, oh, yeah, they said, all the hummingbirds here, they said, feel safe with the two of you. Oh. They said, we know that you mean us no harm and you're going to let us play our games. So <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's one of the green ones now. There he goes. He did a little poopy. <laughs> Shh. Go and move. Look at him. Mm -hmm. Just cracked out. Tell us about the crack you put in this feeder to make them buzz, buzz. <laughs> okay, I I was only following, you know, some internet instructions about putting a little bit of sugar into water. Um, so it's actually not a whole lot of sugar in there, but they are wired. Yeah. It's their it's sugar a, water. <laughs> it's like the crack is making them, is fueling the, the, the wars, like the cracked out flying. You know, they're having a cracked out <laughs> war over cracked out flying liquid. <laughs> Yeah, I took a sip of it. It is sweet. <laughs> sugar water. Sugar water. <laughs> um, do you want to pull down the last message from the hummingbirds, maybe? See if they have a message uh, for the people specifically while I try to get them in action. Hmm, let's see. What color is that guy? Um, the hummingbirds say they're usually a little more uh, willing to take risks in making friends with species that maybe don't look like them. And they said, so like things that we don't understand, other species we don't understand. They said, we just, we want to make friends with them because we like going into places we don't understand. We love a challenge. We love our minds challenged. And they hope that humans can be maybe a little bit like that too. This one is showing off for us. He just took about eight little sips and that he's all so cracked cool. out. Ready for the wars. <laughs> he sure is. The race wars. <laughs> the great hummingbird race wars over crack. <laughs> the year the sugar water came to the hill. <laughs> yeah, they'll be talking about this for decades and generations. <laughs> well, that's just great. This is our new sitting spot, huh? Mm -hmm. Just beneath the birds. Oh, it's so peaceful, yet so cracked out. Wow. <laughs> we could just sit here for hours. <laughs> I know. Like they move so quick that to get them in a still moment, which is so rare, is like feels ultra special. Oh, wait till you watch the the footage back. I have caught some special <laughs> moments here. All right, so any last words before we sign out here? Follow no. us on Arizona Off Grid for more of this off gridding adventure that we're doing. <laughs> yes, yes, um, yeah, and uh, maybe check out my website, kittensweetsintero.com. 
uh, to check out my readings, a little info about me, and one-on-one -on -one channelings that I do, actually. And uh, thank you to the hummingbirds for letting us record you in your cracked crack out ways. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks All right. for watching. All right. Bye. Bye.